This morning, today, I'm going to be talking to three different groups of people. There are some persons present here this morning that we met way back 30 plus years ago on the West Coast. The message that I was sharing, the studies that I was sharing 35, 36 years ago were different than the one we're going to share this morning. Why? Because as time flows, there is increased understanding. There is growth. Thank you, Lord. That's the way it's supposed to be if you're studying God's Word. And so when I began to speak way back in 1977 with that first invitation to come and speak to a group of people about Daniel and Revelation, I was speaking to the first group I want to address this morning. Some of you and many of you out there are going to recall 35 plus years ago when we talked about three and a half years. Let's visualize some of this. We talked about three and a half years. Where did we get the three and a half years? In Daniel and Revelation, repeatedly. 1260 days, 1290 days, 1335 days, 1150 days. All of these are three and a half year prophetic Bible time expressions. But literal, literal time. Now the forefathers and many others with them of various faiths tried to take the three and a half years. They didn't try. They did. They took the three and a half years and turned it into 1260 years and 1290 years, etc., etc. And they had their own reasons and Bible verses to do that. But somewhere along the way of this 40 plus years of continuing study, closer study, more intense study, the three and a half years we could expand to seven last years. Now I want to pause right here. And I want to tell you that for quite some time now, several months, I have been digging more carefully, more closely into some of these prophetic times, all of these prophetic times. And I have found myself asking and praying and asking and praying almost to the point of begging the Lord for some clarification we need more understanding. It's not enough to say, well, I've told the prophets 2,000 years ago, and you need to understand it. We do need to understand it. And so I have been asking the Lord to help me not only see things I have not seen, but how to present them to people like you and you and you out there. How do you present these things? Because as the DVD goes out or as you're in a public seminar, there are always people who come in who have no background. I've spoken to thousands of people through these years, many of whom don't even know where to find the book of Daniel in the Bible. I've had people come to me in the seminars and say, Mr. Wheeling, Reverend Wheeling, I've never heard any of this before. I find it interesting. Well, there was a time in my experience when I found it interesting and then it just grabbed me. And for 40 plus years, it's actually 50 plus years now, I have not been able and not even tried to shake it. I don't want to shake it. These things go through my mind day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade. Now, 
I have to give some of these folk we're talking to here and out yonder, I have to give them a little bit of background. Um, in Bible times, you, you, didn't, you didn't permit a teacher to teach until they were at least 30 years of age. That's why Jesus began his ministry when he was 30 years of age. We have reason to believe that John the Baptist was a few months elder to Jesus at conception. And he began his preaching before Jesus came along and came down to the Jordan. Are, are you listening? What is the wisdom of waiting until a person is a, a reasonably mature age? What is, the, what is the reasoning? Come on. Uh, if, if a person is 29 and 364 days old, 29 years and 364 days old, will one more day make them wiser? No, but there's life experience. There's life experience. We have reason to believe that some of these disciples that Jesus chose might have been a few years older than him. Maybe. We haven't had birthdays for the disciples yet, but one day we'll figure it out. Something happened as I began to involve myself at the personal level in the study of Daniel and Revelation. And what I found was that I was reading over and over and over again. And God blessed me in my youthful years kind of fading now, but God blessed me in my youthful years with a semi-photographic memory. And if you don't know what that means, it means a great deal. It means I can read something and virtually repeat it. And this became absolutely necessary in my own personal experience. Why? Because if you read and you retain, you can be driving down the highway and going through the motions up here. So you can be studying Daniel and Revelation almost 24 hours a day. You understand? And I found myself reading Daniel and reading Revelation, and at a certain point in this experience, I began to look at other versions, Bible versions, and comparing and comparing and comparing. And so it has been a blessing from heaven to be able to go back to a time 35 plus years ago when I was focused on three and a half years of prophetic time. And the attention of thousands was directed to the three and a half years of prophetic time. Well, about 20 or more years ago, I appeared for a seminar and I said, oh, we got to, we got to add to this. We got to stretch this a bit because there's evidence, Old Testament, New Testament, that there's going to be seven final prophetic years. And the headline that I chose was seven last years. Well, there are a lot of people who don't know where to find that. Old Testament or New Testament. But when they see seven last years, they think in terms of seven 365 and a quarter day years. So now we have to expand the discussion and we have to explain to people that Bible reckoning and Bible time is not the same as our modern calendar. That the time on the calendar in the days of Daniel, and in the days of Moses, and in the days of, in the days of, were 360 day years on the calendar. And about 701 or 702 BC, before Christ, about 701 or 702 BC, something happened overhead. Overhead meaning something happened that would affect the whole world and everybody on it. And what happened was 
a flyby in the heavens of an object massive enough and near enough that it in, enlarged, it increased our orbital time around the sun. So modern calendars do not follow a 360 day year, but 365 and a quarter day. All of these time periods in Daniel and Revelation are based upon the 360-day calendar per year. So something has to happen in here. Prophetically, something has to happen. Why? Because it's stated clearly, God, when the time of the end comes, is going to change the times and the season. He's going to rewrite, redraw the calendar. And that's important because the calendar in the days of Moses was 360 days per year. And the sanctuary of Old Testament scripture was based upon a calendar of 360 days per year. And all of these times, all of these times in Daniel and Revelation are based upon sanctuary events. So I have suggested to thousands and thousands of people that as we approach this time of the end, there will be a change in the calendar. And when that change occurs, the world is going to have to revert to a 360 day per year calendar. Now, I'm asking you to think with me of the repercussions of what would happen to this modern age and everybody on this rock. What would happen? What would be the reaction? What would be the response? Would there be bewilderment? Would there be wonderment? Would there be fearful concern? Would there be attempts at the government level and the scientific level and all the rest of it to try and hold the calendar because you're going to change all the laws that govern the governments of the world just by moving the calendar five and a quarter days. You have to, you have to try and understand what we're talking about. Let me give you an example. We moved to Chilton County 40 plus years ago. <clears throat> We wanted electricity. Electricity was not available everywhere in Chilton County when we moved here. So we had access to a rural electric co-op and thankfully they, they had wires, they had power lines running near enough where we moved, where we purchased some land, where we built a home. But they had to run the power, had to extend the power lines to give us the power. You understand? What we want, what we need, is some understanding that these are biblical times. These are sanctuary times that are represented. But at the time of the end, the world is going to be forced to revert to God's times. I don't know how to say that more forcefully. The world is going to be pushed, forced. And this is going to create all kinds of problems. I was telling you we moved here and we found an electric co-op. Well, what that means is the electric co-op requires you, me, if we're, on, if we're using their services, to make a deposit. You have to put a security deposit up if you want electricity. Now the state requires by law that if this cooperative service has taken your money as a deposit and is going to hold it now for 40 plus years, every year they owe you something. What do they owe you? Interest on your money, right? Now what is going to happen to everybody's computers out there and everybody's plans out there? when suddenly you have to change everything
from 365 and a quarter <laughs> days per year on the computer for every person, every home, every family, every business, and now we've got to revert to a different calendar. Can you understand the, the mayhem? Can you understand the madness that could result and very likely will? So the first group is the group that we began talking to at the beginning, 40 plus years ago. 20 plus years ago, we decided, I decided, there's more to this. And I had to expand my thinking and find out what the Sanctuary Times represented in this expansion. The ex you, it's not an expansion of, we're changing time, but it's an expansion in my thinking. And I have to teach thousands of people who've been listening to this for years that maybe we need to think larger think in larger terms. You're listening. Now, in recent months, I've had to expand the seven last years. I was not prepared to do that. I talked about what would happen to some earthly business if the calendar were changed and all that it could do and represent in business. I was not prepared to add to this. And several months ago, it became clear in my thinking, clear enough in my thinking, that this is so important, that this has such meaning, that God is not going to allow this, which is the time of the end, to come upon the whole world without some way of recognizing, some way of measuring, some way of knowing before it happens. Um, that's the burden of Jesus to his disciples before he left and went to heaven. He said, this gospel of the kingdom, what does the word gospel mean? Come on. Good news. This good news of the kingdom is that what John the Baptist was preaching? Exactly. Is that what Jesus and his disciples were preaching? Exactly. Evidently, Jesus is about to leave here and go to heaven to complete his ministry as our great high priest. Jesus is about to leave here and he says, this gospel of the kingdom has not been finished. It has not gone. It has to go. As a matter of fact, Jesus says, the end cannot come until this gospel goes to every kindred, tongue, nation, and people. How many languages is that? Every earthly language, dialect. Every part of the globe has to hear. Now the, the disciples, if you go back and read the New Testament carefully, you will find that the disciples thought they had finished the job in their day. We went to every kingdom, every nation. We pre we, we done it. We've done it. Well, there are all kinds of people in the thousand, 2,000 years since who have said, we've done it. We're doing it. We're going to finish it. We make the effort. This cannot, Jesus is saying, this cannot break upon the world as an overwhelming surprise without a warning, some advance warning, some information. So, let's put it in context. This is the first group. This is the second group. I'm appealing now for a third group of listeners, students. And this has been so difficult for me to reorient my thinking how do you say this? This, is, this could be very confusing to people. And that's not the intent, that's not the purpose. And I know it can be very confusing and disorienting because it has been this additional discussion, light, information, has been somewhat disorienting for me 
and how to say it, how to get this across to people without, well, I have prayed and I have prayed and I have prayed, Lord, how do I do this? How do I say this so that these folk can understand? So these folk can understand. So the folk who have never heard and never read can understand. I woke up at three in the morning, this morning. And suddenly things began to make sense. If, they're going to, if there's going to be a time period, there has to be a beginning. If there's going to be a time period, there has to be a beginning. If there's going to be a special time measured, there has to be a beginning. And what I have found repeatedly is that Old Testament, Daniel, New Testament, Apostles, and John the Revelator, there is clear indication prophetically this is where you begin with this period. This is where you begin with this period. I really shouldn't jump this far ahead, but I'm going to because we're dealing with sanctuary times. Seven last years are possibly measured right here. Possibly measured. Unto 2,300 evening morning. Tell me an evening morning. Is that a year? Is that a month? What is an evening morning? Go right back to the beginning of the book. Genesis 1, 2, and 3. And the evening and the morning were the... Evening and morning, Arab Boker represents one day. 2,300 days. Something is going to happen according to the prophetic portion of Scripture. Something will happen at the end of the 2,300 days. You have to know the book of Daniel. You have to read. You have to study. And in Daniel chapter 8, said the angel to John, in vision, not John, Daniel, in vision, unto 2,300 evening, morning, then shall something occur. Tell me what it says. Does it say, then shall the Lord appear in the heavens? No. What does it say? How does it read? Unto 2,300 evening, morning, then shall the... Ah. That's Daniel 8, 14. And this little denomination that some of us have been part of was founded upon one verse of Scripture under 2,300. And of course the pioneers took these time periods and stretched them so that they would end or come to a close on October 22 of 1844. And that's how we prove that we are the true church and that's how we prove that we have the truth and that's how and that's how and that's how. There's a conversation recorded here. And there's the angel uh, Pelmoni by name in Daniel 8. And he's speaking to another angel and they're having this conversation. And the question that's posed in Chapter 8 and verse 13 is, One saint, one angel said to the other one, In the hearing of Daniel, How long shall be, how what? How stretch, how long shall be the vision concerning the daily? To give both the host, those are the two witnesses, that's another study. To give both the host, and the place of his sanctuary. Ah, oh, my, that needs five hours. Tell me where the place of his sanctuary is. Come on. The pioneer said, well, it's up there. No, the place of his sanctuary is Jerusalem, down here. 
the place of how long the vision how long will be is the idea the vision concerning the daily which takes place at the beginning this is what Michael said to Daniel at the close of his book Daniel opens with the command from the angel shut up the words and seal the book Daniel said wait a minute to the angel just a minute just a minute how long before all of this is done was that a fair question yes because he's had vision after vision he's recorded dream after dream given to and he wants to know how long till all of this is over and done with and as you read through the book of Daniel you will find Daniel saying now this is what the angel said but I still don't understand I still don't understand I still don't understand now the angel says all right close your book seal it up and he says nope I protest how long till all of this is done? Verse 7, chapter 12. Okay, you're asking, I'm going to tell you. It's going to require three and a part years, and it'll all be done. Well, what is this all about? See, the angel who is talking to the other angel, his name is Palmoni. We are given this information for some reason. Palmoni means something. What does the word Palmoni or the name of the angel mean? The number of secrets or the secret number. Now I have to go back to my youthful years when I was a member of the Lone Ranger Club. Some of you are not that old. And those who wanted to be members of the Lone Ranger Club were invited to write in. And you would get a secret code and a silver bullet with a secret code inside the bullet. Okay? So if an angel says, uh, my name is Secret Numberer, and I'm going to give you a number. 2,300, evening, morning. Well, what's the secret? The secret is that it may be read in two different ways, either of which would be correct. As six and a third years, or as three and a half years. Well, how do you do that? Because don't want to drag this out, but because 2300 evening morning is how many days? It can be 2300. It can also be what? 1150. How can that be? Because 1150 evenings and 1150 mornings is 2300 evening mornings, but only 1150 days. I know you got it. Enough said. How do you think the world feels about all of this? So the disciples came to Jesus privately and they said, how can we know when all of this is going to be? I'm, I'm quoting. How can we know? And Jesus said, check it out in the book of Daniel, boys. And in this very conversation, Jesus says, and when ye therefore shall see, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, whoso readeth, let him go away. What does it say? Whoso readeth, let him what? Understand. Jesus is saying, this is hidden. They have eyes and ears, but they don't see and they don't hear. But you are wise unto salvation. Wise meaning Somebody is going to be studying. Well, I want to get here. This is the third class. This is the one I want to open. The 12 months appear in one place. And that's Daniel chapter 4. That's the great tree prophecy. That's the dream given, second dream, great dream given to the king Nebuchadnezzar, the king of 
Babylon. And in each instance, in the book of Daniel, and certainly in Revelation, each of these visions and dreams is placed. For example, in Daniel 2, you are this head of gold, metallic image, gold, silver, bronze, iron. You are this head of gold. You, Daniel 4, are this great tree that feeds the whole world, shelters the whole world. Daniel 7, ah, oh, there are going to be these beasts, a lion, a bear, a leopard, and this terrible guy, this nondescript beast, this fierce, terrible beast who is going to stamp and snort and chew and bite. And then there's Daniel 8. Let's go one by one. In Daniel 2, for God has shown the king what shall be in the... So whatever the metallic image is about, the context is the latter days. Are you listening? Are you listening? We can have types and shadows. We can have Alexander the Great or whatever, but those are types and shadows. And all these things were written aforetime as examples but they are not the fulfilling. God has shown the king what shall be in the latter days. In Daniel 4, the king is given a second dream. In the second dream, there is a great tree. And this great tree feeds the birds and feeds the beasts and takes care of the world and is in the center of the earth, in the center of attention on the whole rock. And something happens that a watcher and a holy one in heaven, and it came to pass at the end of 12 months, it says, that a watcher and a holy one in heaven said, cut down the tree. Well, what does that mean? Cut the branches off, the limbs off, pull the leaves off, throw away all the fruit. And tell me what will be left, because something is left over in this process. Tell me what's left. The stump. But the stump in the earth, leave it. Don't let it die. Don't let it wither and die. And the way you keep it from withering and dying is you put something a band, a metal band around the stump that will prevent it from cracking and drying and... Are you listening? At the end of 12 months, now I'm going to submit to you and everyone out there that the latter days and cutting down the tree and plucking the wings and heart of the lion in Daniel 7. And finally, the struggle that is predicted to come between. So there's a ram with two horns, and he's pushing, pushing, pushing. He's a bully. That's the whole idea of Daniel 8. And he does something. He oversteps the bounds, and he does something, and there is a power from the West. A rough goat, it says, who comes across the face of the whole earth and touches not the earth as he comes. That's air and that's water. You, 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 you cannot... Whatever this line at the beginning of the seven last years represents... It is described every time in a different manner, but it's exactly the same event. It is a breaking of the power of a great and powerful nation. So this is where you and I need to talk for a few minutes about American history. There's a difference between a nation and an empire. 
not necessarily, but there are empires of, the pa of past history, world history, and you can't really call them a nation. They're global in their stretch and their reach and their control. But the United States of America can be referred to as an empire, but also as a nation. Now, what's the difference in, in the mental image between an empire and a nation? Come on. One is militaristic in the extreme. That's the empire builder. We're going to do this. And the other is going to acquire by purchase, by outreach, by whatever, is going to build a great nation. You and I are very fortunate. The people who may hear what we're discussing here this morning are very fortunate. We're fortunate because most of us were born in America. We were born in the United States of America. And has that, does that offer an advantage? Tell me what the advantage is. Come on. Is it a financial yes. advantage? Yes. Is it a military advantage? Yes. Because if you got money and no guns, you don't have money very long. Are you listening? If you have the land and you're controlling it and you don't have military, you don't have the land very long and you don't control it very long. If you and I were born in this country and most of the people I'm speaking to were, then we enjoy an advantage. Now let me tell you what the advantage is. I was born one month after Pearl Harbor was bombed. The war that ensued has been referred to and still is referred to in the history books as World War II. If there's a World War II, there had to be a World War I. If there's a World War I and II, there's the possibility that a World War III could come. And I believe these prophecies, these visions, these dreams are all about a conflict. Under 2,300 evening morning, then shall the place of his sanctuary be It's called Armageddon. Jerusalem. How does that read? How does that read? Jerusalem where the end begins and the world ends. And prophetically, that is a true and correct statement. Where the end begins and the world ends. Armageddon is the cleansing of earthly corrupted powers, setting the stage for the kingdom of heaven to come. If these 12 months have something to do with what is taking place presently, and I have let it be known, and I will continue to let it be known that I believe, that doesn't make it correct, but I believe my assessment is these 12 months we are enjoying presently. I'll tell you something that really settled my mind on this. I was reading about Donald Trump and the Trump Tower and gold faucets in the restrooms and all of these kind of things. And as I was scrolling through, there was a discussion. I don't know if it's rumor, but I think it's more than rumor. I think it's correct. There's a discussion of Donald Trump and his golden hair. This whole thing opens. You are this head of gold. And then I kept reading and it said, he has actually had flakes of gold put in his hair. 
You're this head of gold. You are this great tree. And you're full of pomposity and pride and arrogance and me, myself, and I. And something is going to happen that is going to bring you down. And you are going to lose your mind. Okay? Is it just talk that for a solid week now on national and international news, for a solid week, voices are proclaiming he's a madman and he's going to go crazy and take us with him? I don't know. I just, I just read and I just watch and I just, let me say this, maybe it'll be appreciated, maybe not. I think at the personal level, from now until the 20th of November, that's 12 months from the inauguration until, my personal opinion is that you could not do better, you, any of you, all of you, all of us, you could not do better for yourself and your understanding of prophecy and your understanding of Scripture. You cannot do better than spending every day, some portion of every day between now and November 20th of 2018, watching the news and following the news. Things are moving so rapidly because of the energy, whether it's good or evil, time will tell. But watching and following the events because there is not a day that goes by that a, it's a single, no, no, no. There's event after event after event. We are looking at the end of the world, which if there's any truthfulness, any meaning to this, the end of the world will begin, the time of the end will begin on or about. I believe we're within the 12 months before the seven last years. That's what I'm believing. That's what I'm seeing. We don't have 12 months anymore. We have eight months left. If there's any light in it, if there's any truth. So what does this have to do with Jesus? Well, there's Jesus, the meek and mild. There is Jesus who is busy in heaven. Do we still call him the meek and mild? No, no, he is no longer the lamb. He is the great prince on the way to becoming the king of kings. And there is Jesus king. Daniel and Revelation are about this Jesus. And I cannot tell you exactly how I feel, but it's not pleasant when people say, why don't you talk about Jesus? Well, this is the one most folk concentrate on. Let's all turn the other cheek and let's do good deeds and let's be loving and let's be patient and let's wait. This Jesus is hardly ever discussed among Christians. Our great high priest Jesus and the work that is being done. And it will close here. There's Jesus coming King. That's what Daniel and Revelation are all about. So it is wrong, it is a mistake to say, why don't you preach Jesus? Well, which Jesus are we talking about? And the meek and lowly, everybody preaches him every week and has been preaching him every week for 2,000 plus years. What about this one? What about this one? You understand 
where I'm coming from. I'm not saying this is not Jesus. I'm just saying he changes clothes according to the prophecies. Here he wears high priestly robes and here he wears kingly robes. That's what these things are all about. These visions and dreams in Daniel and Revelation are all about. Now I want to bring this to a brief close here and say that we're going to continue this discussion. We have to. We're just, we're just scratching the surface because something happens right here to drive the golden-haired man out of his mind. And what could that possibly be? Well, if you're worth $10 billion and it all goes down the drain, that would, that would serve to... So, I just I want to bring this to a speedy close, but not a close, a continuing drama. Something is going to happen as we near the close of the 12 months. Something is going to happen that is going to turn the head of gold to silver and maybe even brass and maybe even iron. Something is going to happen when the great tree is cut down and it has nothing for itself anymore and nothing for the rest of the world anymore. And let the beasts of the field get away from him. It says. And in Daniel 7, eagle's wings, Lord and King of the air, lion, King of beasts, pull his wings off and pull his lion's heart out. And finally, Daniel 8, he will come across the face of the whole earth. He's going to make war against the ram that has two horns. Media and Persia. And when he was strong, when he said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built? And when he was strong, the notable horn was shattered and broken. And the power, the authority that he had to himself as number one is scattered to the four winds. We have a lot to talk about. Stay tuned. Get ready. Because the Scripture, the prophetic portions of Old and New Testament Scripture, outline, list, enumerate events that must take place before the seven last years begin. That's my position. That's my reading. So in a few words, eight months to go. To go to what? We can only guess. I can only guess. But I have been guessing since before November when he was elected since before January 20, 2017, when he was inaugurated, step by prophetic step by prophetic step, we've been following. Well, if there's only eight months to go, what does she say? The work of the people of God is to prepare for the events that are before us. That's it. That's it. We need to prepare. What does that mean? Well, it means spiritual preparation. What else does it mean? It means getting out of debt. Good luck. What else does it mean? What else could it possibly mean? That's what we'll be talking about. I want to thank each of you for coming. I hope next Sabbath or the following, you will come. Let's have prayer. Father in heaven, we owe you everything. We owe Jesus everything. We owe heaven everything. We thank you for a little time of peace and prosperity. 
And it does indeed appear to be a little time of peace and prosperity measured. I pray that you will bless the things we've been discussing here so that those who hear can comprehend, can understand the gravity of the things we're talking about in your word. Thank you for giving us your spirit as we go our way. Thank you in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.